On that day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside. Great multitudes gathered to him, so that he entered into a boat and sat, and all the multitudes stood on the beach. He spoke to them many things in parables, saying, Behold, a farmer went out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell by the roadside, and the birds came and devoured them. Others fell on rocky ground where they didn't have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, because they had no depth of earth. When the sun had risen, they were scorched, because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and choked them, and others fell on good soil and yielded fruit, some one hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered them, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but it is not given to them. For whoever has, to him will be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever doesn't have, from him will be taken away even that which he has. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they don't see, and hearing they don't hear, neither do they understand. In them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, By hearing you will hear, and will in no way understand. Seeing you will see, and will in no way perceive. For this people's heart has grown callous, their ears are dull of hearing, they have closed their eyes. Or else perhaps they might perceive with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and should turn again, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For most assuredly I tell you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see the things which you see, and didn't see them, and to hear the things which you hear, and didn't hear them. Hear then the parable of the farmer. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and doesn't understand it, the evil one comes, and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown by the roadside. What was sown on the rocky places, this is he who hears the word, and immediately with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. When oppression or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. What was sown among the thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. What was sown on the good ground, this is he who hears the word and understands it, who most assuredly bears fruit and brings forth, some one hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while people slept, his enemy came and sowed weeds also among the wheat and went away. But when the blade sprang up and brought forth fruit, then the weeds appeared also. The servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest perhaps while you gather up the weeds, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the harvest time I will tell the reapers, First gather up the weeds, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, until it was all leavened. Jesus spoke all these things in parables to the multitudes, and without a parable he didn't speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things hidden from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house. His disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered them, he who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. As therefore the weeds are gathered up and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of this age. The son of man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that cause stumbling, and those who do iniquity, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. 
Then the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid. In his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a merchant seeking fine pearls, who having found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some fish of every kind, which, when it was filled, they drew up on the beach. They sat down and gathered the good into containers, but the bad they threw away. So will it be in the end of the world. The angels will come forth and separate the wicked from among the righteous, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Have you understood all these things? They answered him, Yes, Lord. He said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been made a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a householder, who brings out of his treasure new and old things. It happened that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. Coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother called Mary, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all of his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all of these things? They were offended by him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. He didn't do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. At that time Herod the Tetrarch heard the report concerning Jesus, and said to his servants, this is John the baptizer. He is risen from the dead. That is why these powers work in him. For Herod had laid hold of John and bound him, and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. When he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced among them and pleased Herod whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she should ask. She, being prompted by her mother, said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the baptizer. The king was grieved, but for the sake of his oaths and of those who sat at the table with him he commanded it to be given, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. His head was brought on a platter and given to the young lady, and she brought it to her mother. His disciples came and took the body and buried it, and they went out and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place apart. When the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. Jesus went out and he saw a great multitude. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. When evening had come, his disciples came to him, saying, This place is deserted, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. They told him, We only have here five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them here to me. He commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed, broke, and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitudes. They all ate and were filled, they took up twelve baskets full of that which remained left over from the broken pieces. Those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. After he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. When evening had come, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, distressed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Cheer up, I am, don't be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the waters. He said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat and walked on the waters to come to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was strong, he was afraid. 
and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got up into the boat, the wind ceased. Those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. When the men of that place recognized him, they sent into all that surrounding region and brought to him all who were sick, and they begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment. As many as touched it were made whole.